Hello? No. Uh, not that I know of. Uh, probably a cat. <laughs> I don't know. I'll look after a while. I'm 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 in the middle of something, man. everybody it has been a week actually two weeks since you've seen us but we're finally back we're ready to go we got an awesome episode in line i'm excited for this one i know dj is going to throw in a ton of jokes on today's topic and i can't wait to see them because i've pitched a few to them already that i'm like we got to do so i can't wait for it let's go ahead and get to the episode uh DJ, um, let's go ahead and start with uh, the last week. And, uh, yeah, any any news to report on the week recap? No, there wasn't anything to talk about. Neither of us got anything. <laughs> we didn't. I mean, we didn't get anything. Our alliance did not do at all what we thought we were going to do either. Like, our our points total was uh, was a little disappointing. Yeah, but we'll it was bounce like back. seven and some change. Uh, so yeah. that and that was disappointing because we've hit 800 before. We've completed million point events before when we had support from Cybercore Elite filtering down, but this yeah. time around we just didn't get anywhere close. You know? Hold on, one second. Uh, no, uh, not that I know of. Uh, probably a cat. <laughs> I don't know. I'll look after a while. I'm 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 in the middle of something, man. All right, bye. <laughs> My dad. <laughs> I was funny because I was actually sitting here trying to figure out what the cold open of the episode was gonna be, and there it was. <laughs> oh my yes. God. Just you. Hello. <laughs> and then as soon as you go I'm in the middle of something dad that's where the credits roll <laughs> yes <laughs> what's funny is he called me and he's literally on the other side of this wall what the hell <laughs> you should go up to the wall and be like hey dad can you hear me now <laughs> Yeah, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna bounce back. I feel. I think we'll get back in the rhythm. It's just a bad week. You yeah, know, it happens. It does. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, I'm I'm almost a third of the way to three uh three star four star Metroplex though. Well, there you go. Yeah, that's gonna be. I, useful. I did not get nearly the amount of four stars I thought I would get. Yeah. And yeah, not not happy with my progress. It's taken way longer than I want to, but I feel like it'll probably be worth it when I get. When I get the four star Metroplex, I'll be like, okay, that was worth it. Yeah. What level Adding up how many possible Metroplex? five star shards I'm missing out on, though. Oh, yeah. I'd fun. be upset about that, too. That's why I'm. <laughs> if I am Cause... unable to get the five star Metroplex from the event they release him in, whenever that's going to be, I am not yeah. going to save five star shards for that because as much as I'd like to have it, it's it's only effective in PvP and, and uh, wars. Neither of those things are my super desperate to be better yeah. at it's event grinding that's most important to me and he's not a part of event grinding so if i don't get his five star part i'm not spending the shards on him excuse me yeah um it's uh i i added it up because it's gonna be four twelve it'll be 12 possible duplicates Four star duplicates is what I'm missing out on saving up for that. Yeah. And maybe one or two of them would pop a new bot. Maybe even a new bot I really want. There's still several really good ones I don't have. Yeah. But 
Yeah, starting to have regret on saving up, but I'm too deep in now to give up. Yeah, and that's where I was with uh, Omega uh, Omega Supreme saving for his five star shards. I was hating it when I was two when I was ten thousand shards in. I was like, oh, this is two yeah. five star sh- two five star bots. Oh, I can't give up now. But I'm glad I stuck with it because he's been immensely useful <coughs> in event grinding. Immensely useful. My scores. What have makes gone it up. so bad is with the help of Cyber Pass and that past event, I'm halfway to another five star already. Yeah, me too. And looking at those four stars, like I'm like, no, because <laughs> I'm still. I've only got five five stars. I mean, I could definitely use some more. So yeah, it's tough. You need the Titan for war you really do even at the level we battle at a lot of fights not having a stronger titan has been the difference for me so it it does suck but yeah. all right well since neither of us got anything and there wasn't really much recap to talk about why don't you go ahead and do what it is you do well thank you very much sir i will do what it is i do and what i do is the news <laughs> All right, everybody, here we are in the news, and our upcoming weekend event is called The Unexpected. So The Unexpected will be a Prime Core Shard event in which we can get 5,000 Prime Core Shards, 60 new Shard Crystals, 20,000 or 20 million Alloy Energon, 300,000 Spark, which I'm looking forward to because I'm, I'm starving for some Spark right now. Uh, of course, I always am, but, you know, that's just nature of the beast. Now, this will be a prestige event, 20 prestigious alliance totalizer. So this is going to come out to somewhere in the ballpark of about 800,000 points. So uh, 40,000 points per prestige. <coughs> Battle zones are normal, super XP, as has been the norm. Here is the breakdown of the prizes per uh, tier. And then the, uh, the, the shard crystals have a 25% chance to drop 1,000 premiums, 3-star, 4-star, and 5-star shards. All right, game update information. So they recently released a new batch of G1 cores for Skylinks, Rodimus Prime, um, um, Firefly, and Preceptor. Now, I like all of these cores. Yes. Have you read up on them? Yeah, I did. I was looking through them, and I was like, each and every one of these I want for these bots. I do, so. too. I think these were very, very good. because, And what's cool for Rodimus Prime, they tweaked his bot specific core as well so it's still just as relevant as it was when it first came out but now he's got his g1 core too so now you can swap him in and out depending on what the situation is so he's got some more options now it's pretty nice and i'm excited for perceptors that's oh, gonna yeah. make him like i know a lot of people were like well with blades perceptor isn't as you know as useful as he used to be i think this core will even that Mo- yeah most uh, most assuredly Especially in raids, because that's where he's most useful. Yep. So, and then Firefly's core too. Um, I really like because it should provide <coughs> just as much of uh, enhancement to his ability as an enhanced ordnance core, but with the added protection of the shield. So that's just fantastic. And he's been in the game since day one. He's a one star bot, so he definitely should have had a core yeah. a long time ago. Two thumbs up on all these cores. I'm a fan. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, all right, and then content creators. Sunstreaker Waza released a video, Overlord versus Devastator, still relevant in Prime League. So basically, uh, the argument that's being made uh, from you know some of the Prime League players versus um, Space Ape is that you don't need five-star bots to compete in Prime League hard. Uh, Space Ape's argument is that you don't. Waza and some of the other Prime League hard players' argument is that you do. And I think Waza makes a pretty fair argument. Um, I mean, yes, you can compete at Prime League hard with a four-star combiner, but it's going to be all kinds of hard, which it's supposed to be hard. uh, I think a lot of problems is one like Devastator, they were so early in the game that without a five-star or a buff, they're just not cutting it with the newer bases. Yeah, I think you could roll Magnaboss in there and do just as good as Overlord or Omega. Yeah. The problem is the older combiners. Yeah. And that's why, and that's been my whole argument in favor of five star combiners is that, I mean, we've been adding more and more combiners to the list of combiners for the sake of having content in the game. 
But as time has gone on, what have we done to make the older combiners more relevant? Nothing. Optimus yep. Maximus needs a buff. You know, so <coughs> five-star combiners, is it, it, even if you take away the, the argument for Prime League hard, we need something to make these bots more relevant, more desired again. Like, what? I use mm. I use Superion. I've got them at level 20, and I use them in event grinding. But what am I going to do with them when I get to where I'm zone 15 or, or we're competing in Prime League? I'm not looking forward to that, but I'm sure it'll happen someday. Well, what am I going to do if he's still a four-star? He dies like that, you know? And Sunstreaker demonstrates that in this video. So you guys check that out. You won't be disappointed. All righty. And then the survey is out. So uh, if you receive the email blast or you are a member of the uh, Transformers Earth Wars Discord, then uh, you have a chance to fill out the survey. Five lucky winners will get 500 five-star shards just for filling out the survey. So I encourage all of you, fill out the survey. Even if you don't get five-star shards, this is your chance to be heard. So go ahead and do that. All right, Community Corner, we got some awesome illustrations. Um, we got uh, an alt mode <coughs> for, let's see, Air, Air Commander Starscream. So it's kind of like, kind of a real, I mean, it's, I'm not sure what take that's really supposed to be, but it looks really good. I mean, it's, it's well done. Mm -hmm. And then we got Blackout, but it's Bayformer's Blackout. And this illustration looks good, but I'm not a fan of Bayformer's, you know, Aesthetic. Blackout was pretty cool in that movie, though. I liked him in that movie. That was the first one didn't go as off the rails with the character designs as later ones did. No, it didn't, but they still didn't look great. Um, they still looked like Bayformers. There were too many moving parts. And and then Blackout got taken out by just a guy with a grenade launcher who was baseball sliding across the pavement. So that was kind of was a lame a cool. way for him to go down. That was a cool action shot, though. Yeah. But yeah, he was the only one that didn't get taken down by an Autobot. So. Right. Because I think Barricade, no, not Barricade, one of them got taken out by Optimus, sword in the face. I think that was that was Barricade on the highway. No, Barricade was the uh, he was the cop he was car, the cop bone car. crusher, it bone, was bone crusher. crusher. That's him. Yeah, bone yeah. crusher is a uh, is a uh, it was some kind of a military tr vehicle that he transformed into. But bone crusher is a Constructicon, so that was all kinds of wrong. Um, so yeah, I've got my complaints with those movies. Speaking of Optimus and Give Me Your Face, here is a rendering of Optimus that a fan did, and it looks pretty cool. I like the way that looks. And then we have, uh, we're back into a toy collection. Somebody has a pretty good number of Studio Series figures, as well as a handful of other minifigures going all the way up. I'm not a fan of the Studio Series, because uh, a lot of them are the Bayformers takes, but some of the newer ones are looking a lot better. They're looking a lot more like G1. So... But uh, that's a nice collection. And then the Saga schedule. Here we are in week four. We are in the Alliance Totalizer with Prestigious, where Prime Core Shards are on the line. Coming up next is an individual Totalizer for 20,000 points. And after that is the Leaderboard, where we will be competing for a chance at Minerva and Flatline. We'll talk about them later on. Uh, but that, ladies and gentlemen, is the news. All right, so that was some pretty interesting news. And there was also a live stream earlier today. And, DJ, I know you were able to catch it. So what goodies did they bestow upon us on the live stream? So the big takeaway for me was they demonstrated Minerva and Flatline. So uh, they didn't share any numbers because they're still trying to balance them out and make sure it's right. But they demonstrated what it's going to look like in action. And it's a pretty normal you know, healer, you know, she has a, a beam of healing, just like Ratchet and Wheeljack do. Uh, so she follows bots around, keeps them healed. Her ability is interesting, though. Her ability is a, it is a beacon similar to Chromia's beacon. But instead of dishing out damage or stun, it dishes out healing. And as of right now, it is not targetable by defenses. So you will be able to drop this beacon in the heat of action. It will heal your bots in that area, and it will not be targeted by defenses, so it's not going to get taken down. And then I think it lasts for 15 seconds, I think they said. So in 15 seconds, it'll just despawn. Um, but that is a, that's an interesting ability. I mean, it's different from the other healers. I like it. I'm not a healer person. I, I, I don't think I'll... I, I'm not going to say I'm going to level her up as soon as I get her, but 
That is an interesting ability. And if any healer would be useful for base defense, I would say it would be Minerva. Yeah, it's possible. It's interesting. I like it. It to me, that ability is gonna be I think the healer with the best ability is Ratchet. The healing grenades. I love that ability. I know you are a fan of first age drones. I do. I like the shielding uh, that they provide because if yeah, I, up, I just like be... ratchets because it like it can heal a whole group. Like on my uh, my um, gunner bot squad, if they stick together, which they usually do, if they get in trouble, I can pop that ability and heal all of them up real quick. Well, that's why Minerva's ability is so yes. interesting. It will do the same thing except it'll yep. continuously do it over 15 seconds. It's not a one-shot thing. It, it'll do it over. Yeah. That's what makes it interesting. I feel, I, feel like I, the, I feel like it wouldn't be surprising for them to make it where defenses can target that beacon eventually, though. Eventually, but then it would just defeat the purpose, and it would, be kind of, well, it would become kind of a useless ability because it's not going to have well, a lot of health. Yeah, but the argument is going to be that those 15 seconds of healing are going to make it too OP. People are going to argue that, well, it's too hard for my defenses to take out the bots with that. They could just keep spamming it, and the base would be... Like, imagine if you spam it, 15 seconds, spam it again, put it down again, like a little further ahead, and just keep it ahead of the bots the whole time. See what I'm saying? I mean, unless the ability is expensive. Which it might there, be. There right? are two ways to balance it: expensive, or make it where defenses can target it. Yeah. Well, also if it doesn't provide that much healing, it provides enough healing, but not so much that it's OP. So not that's true. where they're still trying to balance out the numbers. They didn't share any numbers with us. I don't know if they shared the uh, ex how many uh, ability points it's going to cost. I don't recall seeing that. They um, probably haven't yet. They're probably working on it. I'm just saying there has to be a balance because. Oh yeah. With it not being targetable, I can see it being one of those things that's way OP'd, and you can just kill a whole base like without breaking a sweat. Yeah, because your bots won't go down if it's too much healing. So yeah, the yeah. potential for that is there. I can definitely see that. Um, we'll just have to wait and see what it looks like. Uh, the bot comes out in I, two weeks. I'm excited. I mean, it'll be a while before I can get her because there's no way we're getting the four star in the leaderboard. I mean, no, I mean, we'll get the three star. Cybercore is always in the top 100. All right. Well, I believe it is now time to go to the mailbag. All right. Here we are in the mailbag. And our first comment comes from Fear Ironarchy. Side question What is the best collecting experience you've had so far in the game? I think unlocking a new combiner is pretty awesome. Uh, I am hard pressed to argue with you. Collect when you first get a new combiner, that's awesome sauce. Um, I, I think the the most excited I got was the first time I when I collect when I completed Superion back in the day. I had five out of the six three stars that you need, and the last one I needed was I think Firefly. And I got him one night. I was just in bed playing. You know, we were starting to turn in for the night. And then I got him from a from a, a three-star crystal. And I just was like, <laughs> yes! <laughs> and, and my fiancé was like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I got him! You know? <laughs> so that was probably the best experience I've had was when I completed uh, Superior for the first time. And this was like four years ago. So... That was pretty awesome. What about you, Frankie? Uh, the most excited I've ever gotten was when I got Sea Spray, which is recently, because yep. holy yep. cow. Because yep. I it could have been any bot in that bundle, and it was the one I wanted first go at that bundle. Yep. That was amazing. Also, my first five-star bot, that was really fun, because that took forever to get enough five-star shards to get that first one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. As you get stronger, they come faster, but that first one takes forever. Yeah, it did for me, too. So, what? And my, my... I, I was excited to get my first combiner. It's just by the time I got it, I was already battling in zones where a three-star level 10 wasn't really doing much, and to go higher was practically worthless if my teams couldn't beat the base a, a level 10 three star wasn't enough to 
help them out. So yeah, combiners didn't get exciting for me until I had my first four star combiner, which was Magna Boss, and he's awesome. So, oh yeah, yeah, I've got. I, I would say my eight. favorite collecting moment Sea Spray, without a doubt, because I didn't even have the four star Sea Spray. So I was like, holy cow! Yep, awesome. <laughs> All right. Our next que our question, our next comment is also from Fear Anarchy, and she says, as a free-to-play player, how much effort and or resources do you put into two-star or alt-faction bots in the early days of playing when your primaries are maxed out and complete? I still invest some time into making a decent C-squad of alt as uh, it still has better overall power than two-star primary. So that's actually an interesting question. Um... I think I put a little bit too much resources into my two-star bots early in the game. If I had known what I know now, uh, I would not have put any spark into my two-star bots, uh, or my one-star bots for that matter. Um, and I'm desperately wishing I could get it back, and that's why I keep bugging Space Sight for a spark extractor, so we can try to get some of that spark back. Um, I would max out your two-star bots to level 40, I would not invest any spark in them. Uh, if you're still using two-star bots for like a C or D squad for grinding events, at the absolute most, put a combat bot on them and level that. Level the combat bot. Because you can take the combat bot off of them and then put it on a, a, a three or four-star bot later on. Same with uh, power cores. If you're still using two-star bots and you get good cores, level the cores, put them on your two-star, and then you can take it off of them and put it on mm -hmm. a, a stronger bot later. Uh, but I would not put any spark into two-star bots. Uh, had I known that years ago, I think I'd be a little bit further along now. As for your alt-faction the bots, yeah, don't put a ton of spark into them. I get my alt-faction bots to like ability level three, and that's where they stay. I don't go above that. But level them. Level them to level 40, level 50, level 60, because you're right they would be stronger than two-star primary faction bots if you have three stars or better. But don't put too much into them because after a while they're going to become useless. You've got no access to a Titan, no access to a combiner with alt faction. So use them. For now, anyway. Right, yeah, for now. <laughs> so use them, level them, but don't put but so much spark into them. Like I said, level three at the absolute most. That's where mine are. See, I'm a little bit... All right, so what I did... What I've stuck with for most of the way through the game, except for the one stars, don't put any any spark in your one stars. Oh, Just no. don't do it. No. Two stars and up. What I did, I put every bot, every bot I have, I have their ability at level four. And the only ones I go over four are the the four stars or the three stars that are gonna be competitive as a four star. Like your Cheetors, you know, your Elite Ones, the ones that are strong enough as a three star that they'll score, they'll battle like a four star almost. So, but with the two stars, I put everybody I got, as soon as I got them, I put them ability level four. And unless I really love that ability and love that bot, I would leave it there. And I have had a just a horde of spark my whole way through the game. I, I sit at like two million on the regular until I get a five star. I'll blow like a million maxing their ability out. And then by the time I have the next five star, I'll be back up the two million spark. So I haven't had a spark problem. And that was how I approached it. The Septicon wise, I'm with DJ. Just level them, Billy level three or four. You know, you can put some cores on them. Don't put anything crazy because eventually you're going to hit the point where they are stuck. Like right now, Zone 13, they have they struggle with, and they're not going to get much stronger. Most of them are already in the mid-50s and level on my Decepticon team. And it's just they're hitting their ceiling without, like he said, a Combiner or a Titan. They're at their ceiling. They're about to become completely left in the dust with me. So be wary of not overspending resources, but be smart about it too. If there's a core... You have a G1 core that's like gold or silver, level that bad boy up, stick it on the two-star. When you get the three, put it on it. When you get the four, move it up to that. That's the best way to go about it. Have the combats and the cores ready 
to go to the next version of that bot when you get it. Yep. 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 But contrary to Frankie leveling his two stars to level three, level four, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Not two stars. No. It helps with scoring points and events and stuff because the stronger the bot power, the higher the zone you can go. Yeah, but just because it's just because the zone that you want to score in is yellow doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means supposedly it means it'll be a little bit tougher. But if you've got the right strategy, doesn't matter. That's true. Well, so. strategy requires a decent ability level too, though. That's the thing. You gotta have the ability strong enough to pull off the strategy. Yeah. Well, so that's what I'm saying. Don't put a lot of spark in it. He says none. I say three or four because the amount of spark to get to ability level four is nothing really. Mm. It's really not. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of spark I'd like to get back from those two stars, so, and that's <laughs> that's where I'm at. All right. Our next comment comes from Warpath SB. I'm a five star bots. Uh, need to picked for war first when worry picking bots for events. Almost been playing for six years. Frankie, you want to take a shot at that? Um, uh, well, I'm trying to... Five-star bots need to pick for war. Worry about. So I think he's saying don't worry about picking bots for events. Worry about picking them for wars. Eh. <laughs> I get well, what he's saying because he... Well, he said he'd been playing for six years, so he's probably he's probably really high up in the game where they about all prioritize war here's the thing and i get it it's just to me to me prime league sounds really boring because there's only a very few number of bots that people even use to be competitive yeah and that eliminates you know to, to me i want to be able to use all kinds of different crazy strategies i want to be able to use all kinds of different bots like, I love being able to whip out a team of nothing but gunners or a team of nothing but bots with hollows and minions yeah. and wreck havoc on a base. If I get to the point in the game where that strategy ain't going to work because you need a, you know, a small number of bots that are usable, like a fraction compared to the whole that's in the game, that that's going to be boring to me. And I'd probably just move down to an alliance where I could just use where we're not worn at that level just so I can have more fun. Yeah, I don't... I get the challenge is fun, but also trying out different strategies and just doing crazy stuff and it working is the real fun part to me. I like seeing what can I do yeah. with different combinations and stuff. That's just how I am. Yep, I, I prefer to be that way myself. Um, war is only okay to a degree, but I, I like... It like And this is the argument I keep making. It does not provide enough of a reward for winning to make it worth it to me. Um, you need to focus on events because that's what's going to give you the rewards, the resources you need to up the ante on your bots and your squads. And without that, your bots aren't going to... If You you can't handle a war. You need the resources to up the ante of your bots and your squads, and then you can take them into war. And if you're not there, you're not there. We're not there. And for me, war's not fun anyway. It's no, and the main reason it's not fun is because people keep pushing it. War, 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 war. And I'm like, well, why are you pushing, dude? This is not fun for me. You know, events are fun. I enjoy the grind of an event. And now that Titans are in the game, PvP has become relevant. And I enjoy that. I've never enjoyed war. And I probably won't until I'm at a point where I can war on those top tier levels. For now, I can't. And I'm not rushing to get there. So, sorry, dude. We're on the total opposite side of the spectrum, if that is, in fact, what you were talking about. But our next comment comes from Bossman6774. I like the way the events have been lately. Also, uh, like how we're getting more chances for five-star shards and five-star combat shards in events. That, combined with the Supper Pass, makes it much uh, less of a weight between pulls. Yes, sir. I agree with you, because... When I first started playing the game, oh my god, five-star shards were hard to get. I had played the game for like a solid year, and I'd think maybe I'd gotten five, like maybe 600 five-star shards. I feel like maybe I would have got. And I was just like screaming for more five-star shards and events and stuff. 
Um, and it just took a long time before I could start getting them on the reg, you know. But on the reg for me is still every six months, give or take. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm they're, they're able to give them now because there's so many five stars. If we'd have been able to get shards this quickly earlier in the game, everybody would have all the five stars, and you know it would be a wait to the next batch. Yeah, as a matter of fact. Once upon a time, there was only one batch of five-star shards, and then when they decided to release a new batch, the current batch went away, and yeah. all you had to choose from was the next batch. It wasn't yeah. until later in the game that they gave you chances for... They let you choose all the batches. I so, still say I would love just a five-star crystal you can choose to get to where it's random among every five-star in the game what you'll get. I think that would be awesome. Oh God, no! I would be. I mean, because it would be cool. Because you For just the pick event, it. And that's great, but as a as a normal thing, no. Yeah, I would like that. I would pick from that. I'd I, be like, let's see what we get. No, I don't want to choose. I want to have some. I want to at least know what my chances are of of these five. No one opening up like thirty possibilities. That was exciting for the five star five year event, but after that, I'm like I, once a year, I'm willing to do that and no more. <laughs> I I would be fine if they like just did away with the batches and just had a five star crystal like all the others. I'm editing that out. <laughs> that is not making it. No, I don't want that idea in anybody's head. Oh that my would God. be awesome. No, moving on. Yes, because the batches thing has just gotten redundant at this point. There's enough of them. You don't have to do it. I prefer to, to, yeah, but I like having the control of, all right, I'm going to pull from this batch because this, this has the boss in it that I would like. Rather than, if, if they did it randomly like you're saying, there's a chance I might get yeah. a medic. Yeah. No. There's a chance I might get Bumblebee. Granted, I, now that I know what I know. They're all awesome. I mean, medics you're going to need eventually anyway. Not right now, I don't. Not right now. I'm not in Prime League hard. I have no need for a medic. I'll do a video about it. I'll be like, this is what we need. <sighs> I have access to your account, you know. <laughs> I'll delete that video in a heartbeat. I'll be like, oh, no, you don't. We do need it. The game has evolved to the point that they don't need bundles anymore. No, batches. I am, I all day long, oh. I am on board with batches. I want to say, I'm choosing from this batch because I want to shot at one of these five bots. And then I'll do this, and then I'll do this. I am guaranteed, the next time I pull, I am guaranteed either Pipes or Skylinks, finally. And I like the comfort of knowing I'm guaranteed one of those bots. If it was random, oh my god, I'd be so mad. Every time I pulled, I'd be mad. Because it would almost always be something that you're not gunning for, and it's up in the air whether or not you could make use of it. For me, anyway. So it's like, absolutely not. No. I like it because it would force people to use bots they wouldn't normally use. That would be the, the value of it. Uh, not for me. Anyway. All right. Uh, next comment comes from Volcanica69. Level up your defenses a bit more, Frankster. I did the same thing you did. Always, I'm very close to getting five star. Oh, anyways, I'm very close to getting five star. I am... Most likely going for Grimlock. I have a setup that works for him. I'm saving four-star shards for the four-star Titan part. Um, that, yeah, so Grimlock, yeah, he dies. That's actually what me and Sunstreaker Waza were talking about when I was a guest on his, his live stream a while back. Grimlock is just a walking glass gas effect. But if you let, put the right core on him and you level his ability and you put him in the right situation... He can still be a good bot. All right. And uh, our next comment comes from I will find him. And he says, I will find him. I want to know who replied to that. What did they say? <laughs> SG Shockwave replied and says, Hello, I'm this guy's hired translator. And he said, Hi, JJ and Frankster. I finished watching all the episodes of the botcast, and I think all of them are great. Really excited for the next episode. Really excited to see your unique tier list and how you will rate each gunner in the game. <laughs> wow, that's a that's a lot said with very little words there. I'm impressed. That reminds me of was it Funaki years and years ago in WWE where he like did it like an entire paragraph in like Japanese or something, and then yeah. the translator was indeed. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was years ago. I forgot who it was. Oh, my God. That was funny. <laughs> this guy gets a like, and this guy gets a like. <laughs> and our next comment comes from Lord Avix. On your right side is perfectly lined up for Skull Smasher. Uh, I think he's talking about your base, Frankie. Yep, he probably is. Yeah. It's a work in progress. Yeah. Skull, I'm still yeah. leveling. I'm still designing. It's... Yeah, Skull Smasher and Warpath, both. If you have stuff that's in a straight line, that yeah. that's perfect for them. All yeah, right? That's fine. Our next comment comes from Chris Zingler. Zingler, excuse me, Chris Ziggler. I was, no, for Wars, something else to consider is you get two times or three times XP for wins plus a Titan XP. You also gain player uh, XP, our upper left corner, for upgrade bots and research lab. Uh, no, he's not wrong. I mean, you do get more XP in wars than you do in PvP, but you, do. you only get it. You only get the maximum amount of that XP is if you win, and if you win all five times, that's only five battles. Whereas in an event where we're now getting super XP every single event, you get it countless times over the course of the event. You're only limited by the number of times you can battle. So yeah. Um, well, the other problem is that the where our lines for is that I'm lucky if I can win the first two battles. Yeah, I can normally get to where I can beat base three, but I cannot beat base three, four, and five unless it just happens to be a weak alliance that may have just made it into our league. Um, yeah, usually, usually after we lose a couple, I can win base two or sometimes base three. But once we've won a few in a row. It's like I'm lucky to get through base one with like every kind of strategy imaginable and Magna Balls. Yep. Yep. All right, our next comment comes from Sunstreaker Waza. Grats, Frankster. Amazing bot. Buzzing for you. Uh, this is still one of the best bots in the game. So that would be in reference yes. to Sea Spray. And congratulations yes. to you because that was an awesome pull. Yes. And yeah, the, uh, there's the anti, what, anti storm core or whatever it is yep. to, to kind of block his ability. But. Like Waza says in his videos, all you got to do is target it with another bot, take that build bot down, and you still see spray. Yeah. I mean, if you, I mean, you take Warpath in there with you, and you use his ability to target that thing. It, I mean, as long as his ability is halfway leveled up, one shot, and you've done it. Yep. You know? Or an aerial bot. If you have a yeah. leveled up aerial bot, they can one shot it, just pow, and then see spray the base to death. You're yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah. So, and if yeah. they load it down with a core, all those cores on all their build bots, then you just use a different bot to shred through it. Yeah. I mean, so. So, yeah. I mean, there's ways there's there's ways around everything, you know? Yep. All right. And our next comment comes from Matt Polly. Sorry for the essay, but I'll get it all in one comment. Oh, boy. <laughs> all righty. So. After watching the show with Waza, I went back and listened to all the older bot casts in the playlist and got to say that I love the concept. It was really cool to have this to listen to whilst I'm uh, going about my daily business. Nicely done, and for this concept, Frankster and DJ, keep doing what you're doing. My son even requested uh, in the uh, school run, please give my kids Skippy and SG Moonheart a shout-out, as they would love it. Well, there's your shout-out right there, buddy. Skippy, SG Moonheart, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, we hope you guys are doing really well in the game. Uh, we, you know, take it upon yourselves to leave comments on our show, uh, maybe under your dad's, uh, uh, under your dad's uh, YouTube account. There, we'd love to hear from you directly, just to say hi to us. Uh, we thank you guys so much for being fans, and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys progress in the game. You get to the point where you're scoring twenty thousand points, definitely. Put in an application for the Cybercore Flame of Alliances. We'd love to have you. All righty. He goes on to say, glad you went for the Omega four-star part. First good choice. Talking about you. And yep. then uh, with your bot ratings by Action Heroes, I hope you don't miss the opportunity for a Van Dam rating. Uh, well, he's not going <laughs> to be part of the regular ranking, but we'll I'll squeeze it in there some way, somehow. We'll uh, throw a joke or something. Yeah, we just, there were so many Action Stars, we had to be a little bit picky and... Since DJ does not like Steven Seagal at all, he had to be the bottom ranking for he his is, sake. Well, because he is the worst action star of all time. You can't barely... He's not even an action star. No. He's an action dimly lit hall light. There is the worst <laughs> one. 
And his name is Hulk Hogan. Okay, but because that's different. Okay, Hogan he's was, a terrible actor. His movies are, are terrible. Yeah, but he's not known for being an action star. He's known for... No, he's not, but I'm just Seagal saying, is known a, for being an action show. star. So we'll explain the rankings later. Uh, yeah, we'll <laughs> but um, as for base growth, I feel only decent reason for rushing HQ growth is to unlock further research tiers, bots, anything other than that counters productive. And he's not wrong, which is kind of the point we were making before. You want to, yeah. you only rush your HQ if you're trying to get to a point where you can get your lab and other things leveled up so that you can progress your bots faster. But that's going to leave your base vulnerable to attack from a lot of different range of, of players. Yep. So, and then uh, keep the good, uh, keep up the good content. Uh, I think that with a little energon and a lot of luck, this could uh, boom. Well, thank you, man. We really appreciate it. We appreciate that a Dude, lot. Thank you. Thank you for watching the show. Yeah. All righty. All right. Our next comment comes from Lord Avix. Hey, Frankston. I don't know who he's talking about. <laughs> Stop picking on lower family alliances. Go, go, X War. I didn't realize I was picking on anybody. I'm not sure what he's talking about either. I don't remember that. Uh, it was probably about some, one of the comments I made about war, probably, but. I wasn't trying to pick on anybody. I was just trying to explain how I feel about war. Yeah. So sorry know. if anybody felt like I picked on you. That was never my intention. Yeah. I mean, we might we might troll a little here and there, but we're never gonna deliberately try to like you know make anybody mad. You know. Yeah. So. No. All right. Our next if comment. You love come... war. That's that's all you. I mean, I don't. I understand the appeal of it. I yeah. just. Yeah, you know, I just, it's not my favorite thing on the game by far. I feel about war the way a lot of people feel about raids. Yeah, I'm not a fan either, so. All right, our next comment comes from Itachi Yuichi. By the way, dude, if I am mispronouncing that, let me know and then try to spell out the proper way to pronounce it because I don't want to, like, insult anybody by mispronouncing their name. Um, unlocked Metroplex. Good game, easy. Are you saying that you unlocked him? Or yeah, you saying, I believe maybe he could. Or is I mean, he it's referencing been a while you since unlocking I've unlocked him. him, and you've had him from the beginning. Yeah. So, so he must he be could talking, have yeah. unlocked him if you did. Congrats. Yeah, that's a huge. He does. Yeah, once you get the three star, he's really helpful. Oh yeah, for sure. All right, and our next comment comes from William Edward Heckman, and I have to say it like that because I, there have been several times where I tried to say it too quick and it came out Williard. So I apologize for that. So that's why I have to say it separate each time from now on William Edward Hackman your base both look great pretty good I'm upgrading defenses in my base because they're pretty uh, they're pretty base I rushed both of HQs to level 15 which happened about a half a year ago okay gotcha yeah well good luck to you man we hope you get your base uh, up to where it's top-notch all it's right. a long it's a long go, but it's worth it. It is. Uh, make sure you're saving up as much Z Energon as you can, because when it's time <coughs> to upgrade to HQ seventeen, you're gonna need it. And if you get Magnaboss, it'll be easy to cure it. Oh yeah, there, yeah, yeah. And if you <laughs> and if you don't believe Frankie, go and watch Sunstreaker's uh, Waz's video, how to Zen farm like a Magna Boss. Zone thirteen, you can wipe out all the defenses and all you gotta worry about is beating the outpost bots. Yep. So Yep. All right, our next comment comes from John J. Pollock. I will find him! He says, DJ, I'm going to send you a screenshot of my base on Discord. Critique it if you like. Did you do that? <laughs> we'll check that. We'll, we'll, I'll check on that in a, in, a, uh, in a transition. If you've sent it to me, I'll, I'll show it off. He has three replies. First one is from himself. Uh, don't forget JCVD in your... <laughs> <laughs> Why is everybody wanting us to use Van Damme? He had he two does, good movies. I mean, he's got some good ones. He does. Yeah, Kickboxer and Bloodsport. Kickboxer was Time the better Cop. of the two. Time Cop and... Uh, that just sounds bad. Time Cop is cool. I love Time Cop. And there's a maximum... It's maximum something. It's where he goes undercover in the mob. That one's amazing, too. Mm. Now, he did play a fantastic villain in the second Expendables movie. I was actually pleasantly yes, surprised. Did. I was amazed. I was like, wow. Yes. That was actually really good. All right. And then our next comment after that, 
uh, from Matt Pauley, uh, replying to John J. Pollock, 100%. So I guess he wants he wants us to see him uh, see rate, rate his base. And then um, the next reply after that is from I will find him, and he just gave us the bug eyes. I guess he knows Actually, it's implied. I think Pauly's 100% was about putting Jean-Claude Van Damme in the rankings. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I, yeah. I totally misread that. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Our next comment comes from Ushno King, and I think this is his first time commenting with us, but he, he, he says, how do you guys use Prime Course, and which bots are best for Prime Course? Well, that is largely up for debate, mm -hmm. um, but I tell you what, that sounds like a good idea for the topic of our next episode. Prime Course, show, Prime Course. How, do you, we, how do we use them? How should you use them? Yes. You like that? We can do that. Yeah, we can talk about that next week. And, I mean, I still have a bunch of them I haven't assigned because I haven't figured out what bot I think would be best or I don't have a four-star or five of the one I think would be. But, yeah. yeah, we can totally do that. Okay, yeah. Well, once again, ladies and gentlemen, the con the topic of our next episode was taken from the comment section. So please, please, please send us comments on our episodes you might just get your comment made the next topic of an episode this is this is turning into something i'm actually getting really excited for this <laughs> and then our a last great comment plan. i'm excited to be a part of it <laughs> and our last comment comes from lord avix and he says dj van white the thumbnail you were like, uh, yeah you were i kind of I, I know <laughs> Now, to be fair, I am pretty. <laughs> oh, God. Not <laughs> even going to go there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the mailbag segment. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was the mailbag. ton of comments. Thank you all so much. We love that you're watching the show. We love that you're participating and commenting. Please keep it up. We love all of you. Thank you so much. And now... It is time for the main event. Oh, wait, he just got something. I just, I don't know if you noticed, but we had 20 comments. Yes, 20th is, episode. Yeah. Yes. Very 20 comments awesome. for our 20th episode. So thank you, everybody. That was, we yeah. couldn't have planned that better. Yes. Y'all are all amazing. We love the support. Thank you all. And like I said, now it's time for the main event, a topic I've been looking forward to for two weeks. This is going to be so awesome. Let's do it. We are going to rank all the gunners in the game on an action movie star tier, and it's going to be awesome. We do have to explain the tier real quick once uh, once we pop it up here. We we are going to have a visual aid this time. It's rudimentary, but we're getting, we're getting technologically better each week. Last time I had the background, or time before last, we're getting there. Yep. We're getting better looking each week, so without any further ado, DJ, if you will... Hunting season is over. All right, so here we go. The rankings are as followed. Chuck Norris, Arnold, that's Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, Bruce Willis, and last, and in, Josh, in, in DJ's opinion, least, Steven Seagal. You know why we put Seagal where he is. We got the big three in the middle, Arnold, Sly, and Willis. They're in the middle. The reason Chuck Norris is number one isn't because he has better movies. Because <laughs> he does not. No. He does not. This is a little bit of contention. I gave in because DJ was like, but the meme of Chuck Norris is so epic. Yep. And I'm like, I will give you that. Chuck, the legend of Chuck Norris is greater than the actual films. But I will accept it. But for my money, just for the record, Arnold's number one. I own every movie the man ever made. He's my favorite actor ever. I know <coughs> excuse me. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but he's not even that great of an actor. He is. You just don't realize it. Because so many <laughs> it is true. Watch Maggie, watch Aftermath, watch any of the comeback movies that he did for after his comeback, especially Maggie and Aftermath. That man can act, but he knows there's more money in being Arnold. So that's why he does it, I think. 
big Arnold fan, big Stallone fan. Die Hard's amazing, yeah. so Willis has got to be there. So there you go. <laughs> Excuse me. That's our ranking. That's our reasoning behind it. Let's get into it. All righty. So, Frankie, you have the list. So let's start with yes, the I first do. name on your list and where <coughs> they're going to go. All right. We're, we're, we're going to have to debate this one a little bit because I'm sure me and, and DJ will have a little difference of opinions. All but, right. Uh, let's start. Uh, first one I got on the old list here is Smokescreen. So, DJ, what are your thoughts on Smokescreen? I know a lot of people really love him and use him very effectively. Uh, I like him better now than I used to, but I still wouldn't use him on an event grinding squad. <clears throat> the only reason I would use him is if I were in a war and the key defense in a base that I had scouted was the outpost bots, then I would bring Smokescreen in. But And since I'm not that big on war, that's <laughs> not really a thought when I'm ranking. So I would put him in Bruce Willis. Really? I actually, because I've seen what he can do, and let's face it, outpost bots are annoying. They are. They are. They can be the difference between an easy win and a surprise loss. They can. And I had him in Arnold territory for that reason. Yeah, because but to me, if you're grinding, I mean, like if you're grinding an event, you're going to have a bunch of squads set up that can pretty much take whatever zone you plan to go in. And even if even if the the outpost bots are surprisingly annoying, your bot should be pretty OP to the point where it's not going to be that big a thing. Like my biggest <coughs> fear coming out of an outpost bot is black arachnia, the Cheetor equivalent. You know? Yeah. But I can take him out or her out with an aerial bot. Easy. Fell batter, chromia sucks too. Yeah, especially if you're soloing. Um and the, chromia especially. Oh I've God. had them freeze my whole team. But, uh... So, well, so, let's let's split the difference, then. I'm Arnold, you're Willis, let's go Stallone with Smokescreen. Alright, well, now that we have Smokescreen ranked, uh, next on my list is Cliff Jumper. So, DJ, what's your thoughts on him? I like Cliff Jumper, but he looks better on paper. Actually, using him is tricky because you got to time his ability. Just you, first, you got to launch his ability first, and then you got to launch the ability of the bot you plan to use to work in conjunction with him. And then a lot of the times, their ability is faster than his, so you got to try to time that out. And then, so the answer to that is launch his ability in a in a section where you're about to walk. So that way you don't have to time it with other abilities. But, yeah. and he's a gunner, and I, we like our gunners, but I, do. I don't think his ability does any damage. I think it just creates a glass gas effect. And that being the case, I'm pretty sure that the volatile mixture core is useless on him. I'm somewhere between Stallone and Willis. I had him in Willis, actually. When I when I was ranking mine, uh, writing them down, I yeah. just, I, he's just he's not bad, he's not bad at all. It's no, just his ability if nothing else, he's not... a, he's a gunner you, that can just add DPS to your squad, you know. Yes, exactly. But... It's his ability is what drags him down, and that's why I have him and Willis. Right now, if I his just... ability did damage in addition to the glass gas. Yeah. You know, or maybe it, it gave some kind of like a slow burn effect similar to acid or fire damage. Yeah. But I don't know. I think he needs to be tweaked. I, it was a good idea on paper. It's just too tricky to use and too cumbersome. I don't know anybody who actually uses him on the reg. Let's put him in. Willis is fine. Yeah, I think Willis. I don't, there are far worse bots out there. There are, and any gunner, no gunner is worthless. They can shoot over walls, let's yeah. face it. There you go. So, all right, Cliff Jumper is Bruce Willis, so welcome to the party, pal. <laughs> all right, next bot we got is Warpath. So, uh, what are your thoughts on him? Oh, God. Arnold, easy. Arnold, 
Easy, Arnold. He's that such ability. A, he, he is such a good bot. He is. It, I mean, with Warpath, <coughs> you can easily negate the threat of the healing bot cores or the anti-hack uh, uh, cores that we're putting on build bots nowadays. Um, you can use him in conjunction with several different bots to create damage in a straight line, including but not limited to Sea Spray, Hound, um, um, Star Saber. So it's very easy to pair him with somebody. Uh, Goldbug, mm -hmm. I'm not a big, big fan of Goldbug, but pairing those two together is an amazing combination. So yeah, Warpath. I am a Goldbug fan. I don't even I don't have the four star either one of them, but I'm a fan of both. Their abilities are off the chain. Yeah. Now he can just about he can't solo a base because there comes a point where the defense's HP is just too high, especially if yeah. they have cores on them. Um, but if you're event grinding in a in like say zone twelve or thirteen, and you have the five star maxed out, he will solo that base. As long as he doesn't have just the the biggest thing you got to worry about when soloing with Warpath is do they have who do they have in their outposts, and yeah. that I think is what keeps him from being Chuck Norris is he he would not be able to take out outpost bots especially if it was the right the right ones like if it's Cheetor or somebody like that he's screwed yeah he's screwed or 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 Smokescreen he's screwed <clears throat> but yeah I just. I would Ooh, say I, I would say know. Arnold all day long, because I'm leaning Chuck Norris just because that ability is so good. Yeah, it has its downside outpost spots, but you can just devastate in a straight line. Like I'm just imagining, because I don't have his four star yet. I want it bad, but I don't have it. Imagine launching him all the way to the left, sea spray all the way to the right, keep firing in a straight line until you meet in the middle. Yeah, that's devastating for sure. Oh man, he's so good. Uh, but like that, said, but now be... we're pairing him with other bots again, and we are being but... able to pair him with a bot makes for a fantastic bot. It definitely makes them Arnold all day. But what's going to get them into the Chuck Norris category is can they solo at a high level? And Warpath, he can only go so far before he runs into trouble. Again, mostly because of outpost bots, and when, when you get into like Zone Fifteen. That's where the H. Yeah. That's where the, that's where the defenses start getting a lot more health, and uh, you start running he's, into a lot more like G metal cores. Well, if he's Arnold, he's like Terminator level then. All right, so we're are we agreed, Arnold? Yeah, we'll go Arnold. All right, like I said, it's Terminator level though. He's knocking on the door, going, "Sarah, call now." <laughs> All right, next up is Alpha Bravo himself. Uh, Arnold. I like him a lot. Wow, you're going to put Alpha Bravo all the way in Arnold? Yeah, I use him prominently. Uh, he's a great one-shot bot. He's a gunner, so that gives him range. He's equipable with a variety of different cores and uh, uh, combat bots. Uh, he's got a G1 core. Uh, I think he's... I don't think he does he have a level eleven ability yet? Um, not that I am aware of, but let's look at him. I have him. I have the four star. I have the I have the G one G metal. And I have his ability at level four. And he has the four rockets that he deals two thousand six hundred and forty nine damage over the area. Yep. The problem I have with any of the gunners that have the rocket abilities is they don't always necessarily hit what you're trying to hit some of the rockets can miss yeah but that's only a problem if you're in a zone that's a little bit higher than you really should be for the level that your squad is at if you're at a level that's on par with where your squad is or in a zone rather then he should be able to take the only thing I would say he might have a hard time taking out would be a, a shock tower. But everything else, he should be able to take it in one shot. Even if one of his rockets miss. I've never had a problem with, with his with his uh, not one-shotting uh, the defense I was aiming at. 
I've never had that much success using his ability. Like I said, I've got him at level four, so he's not like crazy leveled up, but I just, I've never been a fan of the rocket barrage abilities unless they add something extra to it. But so where would you, so I had him in Willis territory. So it sounds like we're going to, it's another one we're going to put in Stallone. Let's, let's do it. Cause I, I get, I like him. He's on my Gunnerbot squad. I just never really use his ability that much. I'm usually another thing is his ability is a little bit more costly than like say Mirage too. So when I'm looking at with my Gunner squad, which is where I use him, if I'm looking at launching another ability other than sea sprays, I'm going by value. And Mirage has the cheapest of the missile barrages. So I usually roll with that. Yeah, which we'll get to Mirage later, but I would we rather will. use We will Alpha definitely Bravo. get to Mirage later. Yeah. So, all, all right. right. So, up next is Six Gun. Six. Oh. See, yes. I like Six Gun. You know, I don't have him leveled up, though. I've got him up to 40. I've not, mostly because I have his three star. <coughs> but his ability yeah. is expensive, I think. It is. It is. He's one of the more expensive of the missiles, the yeah. gunners with the now missiles. Now, his ability is powerful. But... Yes, extremely so. He is, uh, I have him the four star at level 48 with a gold volatile mixture. And his ability is level four. Now, the, th the nice thing about it, it only deals 1,152 damage, uh, but the four guided missiles each missile prioritizes burning the defenses and causes 2000 damage so he does the initial damage but then it does the fire damage as well right so his ability is really good for causing a massive amount of damage but it because of that it's expensive it is so yes. his, if we're going just based on the power i would say arnold but if we're going by if we got to take the whole thing I'd say Stallone is where I'm at. With yeah, me too. Me too. He's a very solid bot. He's just not like, because the cost, he's not all the way. Yeah, he's just too expensive. Yeah, you put six again. Whatever. <laughs> so now you type it like Stallone talks? Yeah, I mean, that's the whole point of the category. <laughs> uh. If he's a Stallone character, he'd be like Stallone from Lockdown. I'm just saying. <laughs> All, right. All right. Who do we got next? Next on the list is Autobot Jazz. Ooh. And this one, man, that ability does. It packs a punch and a half. It also it, costs a punch and a half. It does. But even if you use it as a one-off, holy cow, that ability. Yeah. I mean, to me, Six Guns' ability was good. Jazz's ability is great. But you pay for that greatness. You do. Uh, I don't use him. I like him. I want to use him. But it's too expensive to accomplish the same thing that I'm already accomplishing with the boss that I have. The difference is, though, he can take out a whole area. Like, he one-shots an area. Yeah. Well, see, if I want that, I'm going to use Alita 1 because she will yeah. do an entire area, and I but can jump gotta, up to the next you, side. You also have to consider the fact he doesn't have to throw himself into the line of fire to do it. He has range, and he stays back, safety, and fires way off and just devastates a whole area. Isn't his ability more expensive than Alita's though? It's. I feel I, like it's. It's been it so could long. Be, but it's been so long since I've used them. I feel like it's like nine points for the first use. It is. So yeah, it's like and, nine. And Alita's is only seven. <laughs> it is. And you can. But again, Alita's launching herself into danger. I mean, as long as she's strong enough to absorb all of it, that's fine. But I'm just saying, Jazz has the advantage of he's not leaping into anything. He's hanging back and doing that. Right, but it, it's it, I don't think his abilities is as powerful. Maybe it is. Is it as powerful as hers? Because I'm I'm using Alita, but that's just because she's the best example I can think of that will accomplish yeah, let, the same thing. Me, it will with downsides. His ability, 
So at level 54, with a level 10 gold volatile mixture, he does 3,283 damage to every target in the area. All righty. So let's compare that to... Like, he, he will one-shot... And I think his area of damage is at least equal to, if not bigger than hers. So, Elita 1, 4 star. Uh, my Elita 1 that's level 55 uh, does 2,045 damage. So, so, he does 1,000 more damage than her. Now, mine is level 65, 11. She does 3,240 damage. Yeah. So, he... At level 54, she does what now? 3240. Uh, he does. So him at level 54 still does 40 more damage than her. Now, how big of an area, though, by comparison? That's another... It's What's... around the same, if not bigger than hers. Mm. Still. His, even his description says in a large area. And then her description just says nearby enemies. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, he... I used him as a one-off. It's like, he was on my A team for forever. Now he's on my gunner team. But if I'm getting... If I'm getting waylaid and there's, like, shock towers and missile launchers that are close enough to each other that it'll work, I just launch that in the middle and boom. Or if the outpost bots pop and they're, like, ones you do not want to mess with, bam, all dead. If you can hit it quick enough, yeah. Yeah. So, to me, Jazz is solidly armored. He's not Chuck Norris because he it's too expensive to be... If it was cheaper, he'd be Norris all day. Oh, but yeah. It's, he's not, so I, I go Arnold. But to me, Jazz is absolutely phenomenal. All right. I can't argue. Yeah. All right, so next up, we have Prowl. Again, I would put him in Arnold. Because his ability, it, for a long time, hitting off Bravo's ability was identical. When yeah. they brought out the cores, they gave it some difference, some differentials. So now they're a little bit different. But yeah. And I think and they were made to <laughs> they were made to work together. You know? Yeah. Um so I like him just as much as I like uh, Alpha Bravo. I would put him in Arnold because I use him prominently. I have his five star. With a maxed uh, uh, Prowl Gold Core. Uh, so, yeah, I think very highly of Prowl. You probably would put him in Willis, same place as you put Alpha Bravo, wouldn't you? You mean Stallone? Yeah, I would put him in Stallone where we had Alpha Bravo. I yeah. just. Well, you would have well, really put him in To me, Willis. I haven't found a gunner yet, well, other than maybe a one or two, that I'm like, this bot is not great. So to me, Prowl, he's like Stallone from Cliffhanger. Cost a fortune to eat this place. So, all right, so we got Prowl. Also, Prowl has a five star too, which is a boom to him. Yeah, that's a big boom. You yeah, can get a he five is. star. Yep. We've got Mirage, and like I said, of the of the ones that fire the rockets, he's the one I use the most because he's cheap. He is cheap, but his ability also does not do that much damage. It's more about the EMP for him. It is, but that can bail me out sometimes, especially if the group separates, like my gunner squad and Sea Spray's way over here, and and everybody else went the other way. <laughs> I usually use Mirage's ability to bail them out. Now, like you said, he's not the best. Um, he's not the best at all. But his, he shoots six rockets, disables defenses for five seconds, and causes 1,600 electrical damage in an area. And that's at level 48 with a 10, uh, level 10 gold uh, volatile mixture. Yeah. See, I've so not the got, best damage. I have not the his, worst. Uh, I have his G1 core on him, but mine's only level 40 because I haven't used him. For some reason, yeah. I have his ability at level five. I don't remember <laughs> having him on a squad. Yeah. So I don't know why that's there. Um, mine's only level four, but. I, it's the EMP that he adds, the, the disabling it. Yeah. That to me is what makes him better than some of the other ones with the missiles. They do more damage, but in those five seconds, he buys you, I mean, 
you can take them out. So yeah, but I don't want to build a squad around. Well, this guy can buy me time. Yes. I want them to destroy the target. Okay. I I am yeah. I am firmly about the one shotters, or the area. Like yeah. lead a one type. Stuff. No, I get you. I mean, so he's more just... of a he's more of in a support position than the team built yeah, around. Now, him. if I Whatever. leveled his ability enough, I mean, it could one shot, but it would be a lower level. And I just... yeah, he he is one of the to me. He feels like one of the weaker ones. I just like his ability a little bit more than some of the others well, because of the stun effect. Well, like I said, the team's not built around him. I just like him because he's cheap and he does the stun effect. I would go Willis. Yeah, that's where I would put him. I would put him in Willis. Yeah. yippee ki Mr. Falcon. All right, so next up, we've got Dust Up. <laughs> he goes straight to Steven Seagal. He's just like, no hesitation. Not even going to look up some stats. Next. I tell you, his ability, he fires off 16 grenades for two and a half thousand damage. So he can do some damage. Yeah, just but, not where you want it. Yeah, I was about to say, it's it's hit or miss. Now, I do use his Decepticon equivalent, Vortex. I don't. I do. He, his... he was my first four-star Decepticon, so I was kind of forced to the and only, i learned how to use him pretty good the only thing that makes dust up even worth chasing as a four star is that he is part or she is a part of victorian who was a pretty good combiner but beyond <laughs> that i have her where i've got all the other bots that i don't use level 40 don't use them at all they're only level 40 just to keep everything even steven and then i, I might use her during elimination when i happen to get to her She's not part of an event grinding squad. I don't use her in PvP. I got no use for Dust Up until they... She has her own G1 core, so she can now do fire damage. Yep. And I think she's getting... If she doesn't already have a level 11 ability, because she's definitely a contender. Yeah. She would definitely benefit from one, but as of right now, I don't... Mm, I... No, I would no put use. Dust Up in Seagal as well. I'm not going to argue with you there. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying I don't think it's a worthless bot, but just know what you're getting. That ability may or may not hit what you're aiming at. No, it's great so. if you just need a gunner for the DPS. Yeah. And she's just the one you have. Here's the thing. But... If it hits, though, it'll one-shot. That's the thing. It's just them grenades go all over the place. So yeah, it's like... and they, that's why it's like, and you, yeah. you, how often are you in a position where there's not but one target in an entire area to soak yeah. up all that damage? It almost yeah. never happens. It, yeah, unless so. they're really spreading out their base. So I'll agree. Dust Up is Steven Seagal. We'll, we'll go with Under Siege, though. We'll go with the better version of Steven Seagal. We'll We'll throw it up there. So who are you? I'm just a cook. Just a lowly, lowly cook. Oh my god, we're gonna die. Yeah, but as soon as Tommy Lee Jones gets on screen, they're gonna forget all about Dust Up. <laughs> Alright, next we got our newest... <coughs> excuse me. Our newest gunner to the game, Rotor Storm. Oh god, Man, dude, I love dude. me some Rotor Storm. Rotor Storm. I don't Storm. even have the four star yet. Oh I man, I'm tempted to put him in Chuck Norris, man. Chuck Norris. I don't know if I'd go all the way to Chuck Norris. Because I had him at Arnold. He's just like yeah. Sentius, but he's, he's like him, Sentius, and uh, He's a Strafe. Sentius in the air. He is. Yeah, Strafe, same thing. Those bots, oh man, they're but so they're so devastating. They are. They are. Even Sentius, though, I wouldn't, if I was ranking Sentius on the same kind of scale, it would be the spot before the end, though. Yeah. Like, Sentius is amazing, but, like, I don't know. I just don't see that as, like, a, a you know, he's an amazing bot you want on any squad. I just, I wouldn't build a squad around him. Right. Rotor Storm, he would be immediately plugged into my gunner squad, though. Immediately. Oh, yeah, for sure. So Rotor Storm is amazing. He's, yep. he's he's I put him Arnold from Predator. He's getting to the chopper. Get to the chopper! <laughs> All right, 
right. Well, speaking of great gunners, top tier gunners, next up is Helm. Oh, I'm so tem- I'm tempted to put him in in Chuck Norris too. Ha- I, I I had him there. I had him in Chuck Norris territory. Chuck Nor- you think Chuck Norris? Yes, I do. Yeah, Hound because his own G1 core that ups the Anio's ability and creates a duplicate. Yes. His level yes. 11 ability cre- makes his his uh, his Hound bombs just way more powerful, way more devastating. He can yes. do damage Even to multiple it, targets. Though, they still waylay defenses from a long range. Yeah, like. and he has a fantastic bot to pair with, <laughs> say, Warpath or or uh, another, because you shoot his ability off one time, and then you can use you can maybe use it twice to destroy everything else, or you can take his ability and pair it with Warpath to take out a a, a, a defense with higher DPS. It's down yeah. in two shots, and you've done damage to the surrounding area in the meantime. Yes. There's just way too much, and Waz has been saying forever that Hound needs to be in a five-star batch. I'm he with him. Hashtag five-star Hound. We need it. Yeah. This bot is amazing. So Hound is our first bot in Chuck Norris territory. Yes. The man, the myth, the legend. Hound. Yes. Hound right. is there. Good deal. I have no idea. Not that much. Yes, uh, I love some Hound. He's amazing. So now we're up to Sunstreaker, which was the first gunner that had a five star. He was, and I like oh. Sunstreaker. I like his ability. I just, it's a little too expensive for me. I think it needs. Well, it, it's more expensive than 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 Hound or not Hound. Um, it's more expensive than Alpha Bravo or or Prowl, and that's where I think it it shouldn't be. It should be about the same cost. It should be six plus two, and instead it's I think it's seven plus. I just the I think advantage it's too his ability has over some of the others that use like that launches the missiles or the grenades. Right, is the fire is the fire damage. Yeah, the, but you can get that out of how out of Prowl now you just put his g1 core on him and it creates fire damage you can and his ability is cheaper you gotta remember sunstreaker he has that g1 core too that adds the more uh damage to the attack than the volatile mixture would it it does uh in addition to that it create it basically gives his fire damage like a crimson effect if the if the target is destroyed it spreads yes it spreads uh let me see i actually i I really like sunstreaker yes increases the special ability damage by six percent if the target is destroyed the flames will spread to the next target so yeah i like sunstreaker a lot i think he'd be very beneficial to a gunner squad i just think his ability is too expensive is the the one thing that holds him back for me it is well a lot of the like a lot of the better gunners fall prey to expensive abilities it's just it seems like it's just par for the course but they do a ton of damage yeah which is why i used to not like gunners and now i'm all about some gunners so it's like i've done a complete 180 yeah i love gunners now sunstreaker as much as i'm singing his praises i still got him in stallone i got him with alpha bravo and prowl i just that's where I see them. And uh, Sunstreaker, I'm I'm leveling him up now to level 51. By the end of this weekend, I'm going to have him level 51, and it's to the moon with him. I would, I mean, I would have had him in Bruce Willis, to be honest. But, and that's, again, because his ability, it's not as powerful as Alpha Bravo and Prowl. It can be, if used correctly, with his core, yes. but it, it's too expensive for me. I like Sunstreaker too. I want to use him, but he's too expensive. Yes. I love him with the G1 core on him. I have the G Metal G1 on him, and I just think he's a phenomenal, phenomenal gunner. So I have that's the, why G, I go the G I have the G Metal core. I'm just waiting to get the five star someday. Someday. Yeah. See, I'll level it up. Like, I'll do like I'm doing with Swoop. I'll level the G1 core all the way up. And then when I get the five star, he'll be ready to go. There you go. So, all right, well, we are down to the final gunner. Wow, we really? all know where he's going. We got the, we are, we're in the last gunner? The last gunner. Really? I There's feel like... a lot right in the middle. I, yep. already, I already know who we're getting to. I know who we're, uh, I already know who this is, so I'm not going to, 
This guy, this guy isn't just Chuck Norris. This is Chuck Norris from Expendables 2, okay? We're bitten by a king cobra. Yeah, I was. But after five days of agonizing pain, the cobra died. That's the Chuck Norris, <laughs> the Chuck Norris this guy is. Uh, sea spray is, I think, the best spot in the game. My opinion. I just got his five star. I've got him ability level 11. I've got the maxed out G Metal Volatile Mixture. He's level 52, and he shreds everything in his path. Yep. He is the reason I have the Gunner Squad. He's the reason I tried it out, and I have not looked back since. That's that's equal to the Minion Squad now for my favorite squad. So, what do you have to say about old Sea Spray? I I cannot argue with with the awesomeness that is sea spray the things i have seen him do um i'm he scares me i don't want sea spray anywhere near my base I that level what, 11 it, it's great before the level 11 but when you hit that level 11 woof. yep it's just the amount that he does is just savage <clears throat> Because he not only devastates everything in his path, but he then stuns it. Yeah. So even if he doesn't take it out, is stunned. Yeah. So best spot in the game, my opinion. And also, he has convinced me Gunners rule. So Gunners are. I mean, that's why I've had two Gunner squads. I've got two Optimus Prime led Gunner squads. They each have uh, a five and a four star Skyburst, and then they have. Prowl, Alpha Bravo, Warpath, and Hound, all on them. The three and the 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 three, four, and the five stars all working together. They are fantastic. Yeah. Um, Skyburst might as well be a gunner, really. I mean, yeah, I'm working on a video actually uh, of bots that need to be reclassified, and she is definitely on that list. So. Yeah, I don't know why she's not a gunner because she fires like a gunner. She's like having flak on a bot without having flak. Yeah, even her ability fits that of a gunner. Yeah, and it, it never made any sense to me. So I'm working on that video. Everybody, stay tuned to my channel, The Arrow DJ Heart, for the top five bots that need to be reclassified. That video is coming soon. She needs to be reclassified and straight into Arnold. Hasta la vista, baby. It was my first five star, so I'm a little biased. Yeah. Now, really let's say, bomb. let's just for the sake of argument, let's call her a gunner. Let's call her the last gunner, right? Okay. I'm gonna put her in Arnold, be just uh, like because she's got fantastic DPS. Her ability yeah. is very damaging, but it spreads more so than Prowl or Warpath. But her DPS yes. is better, and she's a fantastic well, candidate for several uh, cores, including. Uh, the Souls Prime Core and the Prima Core. Yes. She's great for both of those. Yeah. Now, the thing to her ability, though, the further away you are, the further it spreads out, the closer you are, the tighter it is. Right. So, so if, so you're if you get really to... close to a defense with a lot of health, hit it. All her missiles are going to hit that one thing and just blow it out of the water. Or. Once you have her level 11, especially, you fire off in the distance, you could just wipe out a whole line of defenses. Assuming that the defenses aren't super high HP, and a lot of times they yeah. are, I don't like using her ability at, at a range because yeah. it doesn't do that much damage because it spreads out. You too can far. also use her for pathing, though. If there's a spot you don't want your bots to go because it's like all uh, resource buildings and stuff. Yeah. Fire that ability, like get it where you can fire it in a line, wipe them all out, and your bots will go where you want. Yeah, assuming you can get it. So, to I mean, one there's shot. a lot of uses for her ability. Skyburst is amazing. My favorite thing to use her for is Prima and Solus. Now, I just took the Solus Prime core off of my four star Skyburst and I put it on Huffer. Because I've got Huffer now as part of my minion squad, and the Solus Prime core is an obvious choice for the minions because it's just another thing on this field that's doing damage. Um, yeah. But the Prima Core is on my five star Skyburst all day long. I yep. did not I consider putting her G1 Core on my four star because I do have the, the G1 Skyburst Core, but yeah. it made more sense to me to put an Attack Core on her because I don't use her ability that much. So the biggest benefit to her G1 Core is that it would create EMP, it would EMP the targets for a minute and stun them. 
but yeah. I like stun, but it's not my primary thing. I would just assume destroy the target. So yeah. in that vein, her DPS is more important to me, so I put the attack core on my four star. Um but but yeah. So yeah, Skyburst, I guess is she's the last honorary gunner. And uh yep. Which, to be she fair, fits all the classifications of a gunner. She's just a special bot for yeah. some unknown reason. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, these are the rankings. A lot of Stallones in there. Yeah, a lot of Stallones. I mean, I mean, to be fair, you know, he's right there in the middle, and uh, not all not all the gunners are you know on the legendary status that is Chuck Norris, but there's only one of them that's terrible. <laughs> You know, yeah. and, and and this is a point that Waza drills home every single live stream he does, and I'm in complete agreement with him. We want bots that are good. We don't need bots that are OP and overpowered. We don't need a bunch of Chuck Norrises. We definitely don't want a bunch of Steven Seagal's. We need Arnold's or Stallone's. Bots that are good, that are beneficial to the game, but they're not overpowered. And that's what every bot should be. And most of the gunners fall in that. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, it, to me, the more I look at the gunner class and use the gunners, it's one of the best classes in the whole game. It's one of the most well-rounded group as well. It is. I mean, the only group, the only class I think I would prefer over gunners is aerial. I'm the same. I'm the same. Yeah, I prefer. Yeah. I have way more aerial squads than I do gunners than I do gunner squads. And special, the special class is too all over the place. It's hard to narrow it down. There's so many different kind of bots in it. Yeah. That it's like it's it's all over the place. But I would definitely put Gunner just a smidge below Aerial because Aerial's just it makes it so easy to just spam Aerial bots. It's a, it's an easy, quick way to you know to be successful, and it's a great beginner strategy to use aerial bots as well beginner hell i still do it well i know but i'm saying it's the <laughs> easiest strategy to start the game with because yeah the the aerial bots were all the way down to one stars most of the early ones there's a ton of them in the one stars yeah so yeah. from the very beginning of the game it's easy to get aerial bots and it's really easy to know how to use their abilities yep you know and then that gives you the time to learn all these other classes and and how to best utilize them because you can just use the aerial bots to ensure victory you know it's like so pretty much but gunners are cool i retract all my statements about not being a gunner fan i'm now a gunner fan so there you go it has happened i've crossed over the fence all right well that was today's episode i hope everybody had a blast hope you had fun we had fun doing it dj is gonna have a whole lot of fun editing this <laughs> yeah, yeah, all those yeah. all, i mean He's probably going to fill it with all kinds of one-liners. It's going to be amazing. Yep. Yeah, we're going to have everything from probably from Arnold saying stick around to... <laughs> to I'm sure there'll be a few good uh, a few good diehard uh, references in here. There'll be, some good, there'll be some good stuff in here. I just got to... <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a pain in the butt. I'm going to be up all night doing this because this is a, this video is an yeah. hour and... Uh, hour and 40 minutes. Yeah, wow. So mega sized episode of the podcast then there you go mega episode it's got to be i mean with that much muscle i mean it's got to be <laughs> so all right that is it on uh, next week's episode prime cores and the best spots to put them on correct dj ain't that Absolutely. what we read on yes that's an idea that came from our mail bad segment today and that will be our next topic it just it was too good of an idea yes also eventually i do want to have an episode where we talk about type and uh and pros and cons kind of basically a review of titans i would love to do that uh some point down the road so maybe week after next we can tackle that because i have a lot to say about it because titans are awesome but at the same time there there are some downsides yeah yeah um... so and just saving up for the four star titans made me think about all the everything about a titan and, and weighing whether i'm making the right decision or not right so we'll tackle that down the road. Next week's going to be awesome. Make sure you check out DJ's Crystal Kraken. It's going to be pretty exciting. He's the only one of us that's going to really have a shot at a four-star because I'm saving the shards. So go, DJ. You're our only hope this week. I'm getting two four-star bots this weekend. 
Well, there you four go. Four star crystals anyway, because I'm like this close to one, and I'll get enough shards for another one. Nice. Yeah, I I will not. I'll be saving them, and I'll be like sitting there hating myself for it all the way. So, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, check out my daily videos on the event. Should be pretty cool. Check out my crystal cracking. Just don't expect a four star unless something crazy happens with a free crystal or a premium. Cross your fingers. Be Warpath. Be Rotor Storm. Either one. <laughs> so that's it for this week. But uh, we will be back next week. We'll be here. We promise. It won't be another week gap, at least for a while. Yeah. So uh, we will see y'all then. Same bot time, same bot channel. Brinkster out.